Enough chat, let's get right to it, shall we? So here we are in R, and I have already run this analysis just to make sure I don't make a fool out of myself. Whoops, too late. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and re read in the relationship satisfaction data set. And I always like to look at, oops, gotta run that line first. I always like to look at the first few columns of the data set, make sure we good. And let me run that again. And it looks like we're good, everything read in properly. And so I'm gonna go through the exact same procedure that we've always gone through, which is to plot the univariate distributions, then plot a graphic that matches things, and then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, also look at diagnostics, that's important. So first I'm gonna look at, uh, well, here's the research question we are trying to address. And that is, are we justified in adding interests above and beyond communications, communication and honesty. So we are suggesting that marital satisfaction is a function of communication and honesty, but we want to know if having similar interests adds information above and beyond just communication and honesty. So we've got four univariate distributions to look at. Satisfaction, and that is looking okay to me. Looks pretty symmetric. Nothing too concerning, so we're centered on around, I don't know, 50 ranges from, I guess it's kind of odd to have a value less than zero. It goes up to 120, so that might require some looking into. Maybe that's miscoding or something. So now we look at interests, and we have some negative skewness. Now that's not our outcome variable, so it's not terribly concerning, but it is kind of weird that we have negative scores for interests. And being the one who created this data set, I will tell you that is completely accidental. And just treat it as if it's normal. How's that sound? And then honesty, uh, everything looks fine there. And communication, everything looks fine there. So univariates look okay. Um, again, if I hadn't been the one to create the data set, I might look into those negatives. But since I created it, I am good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to plot the model of interest for the reduced model first. But as the comment says, I'm going to plot it multiple ways because oftentimes looking at the plot in different ways gives you different perspectives. And here I'm adding a ghost line for honesty is equal to 28 and I'll show you what that means in a minute. So let me enlarge this. So now what this has done is within FlexPlot it is showing the relationship between communication and satisfaction at varying levels of honesty. And so I have included a ghost line, which is the line for those who are low in honesty. And so it makes it easier to compare across the plots. And so what we see here is there doesn't seem to be much of an interaction effect going on. It doesn't seem to depend, or the relationship between communication and satisfaction doesn't seem to depend much on honesty. I mean, these lines aren't really parallel here, but they're close enough to parallel that I wouldn't worry too much about it. So that doesn't seem to indicate any problems. Let me go ahead and look at this right here. So now we have just flipped the role of honesty and communication. So now we're looking at the relationship between satisfaction and honesty, given different levels of communication. And here I decided to set the ghost line reference to a communication score of 28. And so that tells, that shows, or repeats that line for those who are low in communication. And same as before, we don't see any evidence that there's any sort of interaction going on um, because the lines look to be about parallel. So as I say here, uh, there's not much evidence of interactions and non-linearity. And so we can do what is called an added variable plot. So added variable plots are pretty wicked awesome. Basically what they do is they residualize some of the variables and plot the relationship between the remaining variable and the residuals. So in this case, go ahead and you can ignore that part. That was just uh, me playing with the function and making sure it works and that sort of thing. So what this right here is gonna do is it's gonna look at the relationship between communication and, or what it's gonna do is it's going to identify what the last variable is here, which is honesty. And then it's going to model the relationship between satisfaction and communication residualize that or subtract from the model any fit that is due to communication and then what it's left with which is honesty it's going to look at the relationship between honesty and satisfaction or another way of putting it we're going to look at the relationship between honesty and satisfaction after we have removed the effect of communication 
So that will make it a little more clear because these sort of plots are a little hard to interpret and because there is no, there are no interactions or evidence of nonlinearity, we can look at a added variable plot. So with that, so this tells us that once we residualize uh, satisfaction or remove the effect of communication, there is still a relationship going on between honesty and satisfaction. So that's interesting. Even after controlling for communication, we still have honesty going on. And let's go ahead and look at it the other way around. So here we are controlling for honesty and looking at the relationship between communication and satisfaction. And again, still have this linear relationship between communication and satisfaction. So wahoo, yay, hallelujah. So all that so far was looking at the reduced model. Now let's go ahead and look at the full model and see what we can come up with. So I'm just as I did before, I'm going to visualize the entirety of the full model all at once just to identify if there is some sort of interaction or nonlinearity president president present I meant to say and here our ghost line is going to be those who are low in honesty and low in communication uh, so that would be this area right here so just if you kind of squint your eyes ish and just look overall across the plots they all seem to be pretty parallel so it doesn't look like there is any strong interactions going on except for maybe like here we got a negative relationship here but with such a small sample size, um, I don't know, what is that, you know, 15 dots, I, I wouldn't worry much about that. For the most part, we have a pretty much straight line relationship between all of them. So again, because there is no nonlinearity or uh, interaction effects going on, I feel comfortable doing an added variable plot. And so here, now this would be a great graphic to represent our hypothesis. Again, we are asking if interest adds any information above and beyond honesty and communication. And so um, this added dot plot function will control for or will residualize uh, the honesty and the communication effect from satisfaction and leave what remains in satisfaction we could then see if interest is related to that and holy moly look at that so again even after we remove the effects of honesty and communication there is still a very strong relationship between interests and satisfaction so far we have only done a graphical analysis but we have a lot of support and we have a great visual that shows us exactly what's happening with our model comparisons so now when we actually do the model comparisons i'm expecting a p-value less than 0.05 and i'm expecting Bayes factors that are like greater than three or maybe even 10 or maybe even 100 i don't know and i'm expecting aic and bic values to be lower for the full model, which indicates that the full model is the better of the two. And again, the full model means the model with more information. So in order to do that, you have to create two models in R, one called full, one called reduced. And because we should be looking at the diagnostics, I'm gonna go ahead and visualize. And so what we see here, this is the residuals. They look a little positively skewed, but I'm not too worried about that. Uh, residual dependence plot, there's slight nonlinearity, but not anything major, and maybe a little bit of heteroscedasticity, but again, I'm not worried about that at all. So, looks like our assumptions check out quite nicely. Uh, and I even have the note right there nothing too concerning, I reckon. And it's very important when you are doing data analysis to use terms like I reckon. Okay, and then now, again, ignore this. Um, now we get down to the function uh, within the Pfeiffer package called model.comparison and that will give you the statistics that we've been talking about. So for the full model, the AIC is 24.12 which is smaller than the AIC of the reduced and based on the graphic that's exactly what we would expect. So AIC tells us the full model fits better. The BIC also tells us that the full model fits better. And look at the Bayes factor, holy moly! We got 2.8 to the uh, natural, or not natural, to the base 10 exponent of 12. So basically uh, that's 
point eight, well, two with 11 zeros after it. So we are like into the billions or trillions or something like that. So there is resounding evidence that the full model is way more likely than the reduced model. And then here is our p-value, which is, um, again, scientific notation here. We got 15 decimals to the left of where it is right now. So we are way under uh, 0 0.05. So all those metrics agree that the full model is way better than the reduced model. And now I also um, like to look at the difference in predictions. So uh, basically what this does is it uh, computes the prediction under the full model and then the prediction under the, reduced, under the reduced model and compares how different they are. So the smallest difference we see the two models are predicting people with a difference of basically zero. So basically they're given the same prediction, but that's the minimum value. The maximum value is 1.78. So on average, um, well, here's the median. So on average or on median, you could say that they are off by 0.23. Oh, that's right. These are in uh, standard deviation units. So, um, on average, there is a 0.2 standard deviations different between the full and the reduced model predictions, if that makes any sort of sense. So that was a um, nested uh, model comparison. Now let's go ahead and do a non-nested model comparison. And so let's say we want to look at whether honesty or interests are stronger predictors and in both cases we want to control for communication. So again in both models we have communication uh, being residualized in our added dot plot and then we are looking at the relationship between interests and satisfaction after controlling for communication as well as honesty and satisfaction after controlling for communication. And I just created two different objects, A and B, so that I could plot these two side by side. And here we go. So here is a relationship between interests and residualized satisfaction, and here is between honesty and residualized satisfaction. Now just first glance at this, uh, I see that the interest relationship is way steeper than is the honesty relationship. So this seems to indicate that the interest model is probably the preferred model. So if you want to be satisfied in your relationship, it's a given that you should have good communication skills, but if you had to choose between a partner who is honest and a partner who shared your interests, choose a partner who shares your interests. By the way, don't at all take my advice because I totally made this data set up. This has no real consequences in the real world. Just love your partner for who he is or who she is, okay? <sighs> Moving on. And then finally, now uh, that we have visualized it, we can do the model comparison. So exact same model that we had, or exact same formula that we had in the added dot plot and then mod one and mod two, and then now we can do the model comparisons. And notice that it is smart enough not to give you a p-value, which is fantastic. Oh, and I just realized that this does not have the difference in r squared. So I will change that in a future iteration. But in the meantime, what does this say? So 24.19, or 2,419 versus 2,473. So model one is favored for AIC and BIC, as well as the Bayes factor. And of course we can't compute the p-value and the largest, and then this actually has approximately the same values over here. So on average-ish, we are about a quarter of a standard deviation different between our predictions. So yeah, that's pretty cool. So that tells us that model one is the preferred model. So it is more important, and that actually, again, matches with our graphic here. This graphic suggests that interests are more important than honesty, and our estimates uh, validate what we see visually. So that's a basic introduction and how you can do model comparisons in R. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you're just loving this stuff. Like, awesome, and R, and it's amazing, and you're just having fun, yeah. We're all having fun. We're learning, we're sciencing and stuff, and we're having fun. So keep having fun. Peace out.